Uh, hi, I'm Louis Rosenberg, uh, the founder and chief scientist of Unanimous AI, and today I'm going to talk about generative AI and the threat to human agency. So let me start with just a couple comments about generative AI. First, uh, it is a genuine computing revolution. It will change society like the PC revolution, the internet revolution, the mobile phone revolution, and it will happen fast, much faster than prior transitions, not five to ten years, more like one to three years. And it will have risks. Some are familiar risks and some are unfamiliar risks. I will focus mostly on the unfamiliar risks because I think they're the most important to talk about. And they relate to this key fact that generative AI is not just about creating content. It will actually unleash a new form of media, media that is personalized, adaptive and interactive. And regulators are not ready for this new form of media which can be used as a dangerous form of targeted influence. So let's talk for a minute about the familiar risks. Uh, first is threat to jobs. Uh, generative AI will create human competitive work products at a professional level at scale. Uh, that's going to impact jobs. It's already impacting freelance artists, freelance writers, programmers, analysts, uh, radiologists, oncologists. It's going to impact everybody. It's going to be a problem, but I think we will work through that problem. It's not the first time we've dealt with technologies threatening jobs. Then there's inaccuracy of content. Uh, generative AI produces content that looks very authoritative, but it can be error prone and biased. Um, there are currently no standards or certifications for accuracy. Uh, regulators and, and policymakers really need to put uh, a process in place to, to certify regulate accuracy. We will do that. I think that will get done. Uh, it's not a, a new problem. Then there's deliberate misinformation. Definitely not a new problem. Generative AI produces content that looks authentic, but it can be fake or misleading at massive scale. And we can be buried in fake media, papers, articles. Uh, and right now there's no watermarking process. And that's really what we need is a process where every piece of uh, content generated by uh, a large scale AI system uh, should have watermarking built into it so we can trace back uh, where it was generated and, and know that it was not authentic, that it's computer generated, not authentic content. And I think we'll deal with that. Then there's the unfamiliar risk. Generative AI is a new form of media that can threaten human agency. And that's what I want to focus on. That's the title of my talk. And my thesis is that unless regulated, generative AI could be the most dangerous technology for human manipulation that we've had to confront. And, and the reason is it enables targeted, customized, interactive, and adaptive influence at scale, aimed at individuals one by one. Uh, before I describe that, I want to just make some definitions so it's clear what I'm talking about. When I say generative AI, I'm talking about large-scale AI systems that can uh, create human competitive content at professional quality at scale. We normally think of those as documents, images, videos, music, computer code, but it also includes conversations. And in fact, conversations are, are maybe one of the most important pieces of content that, that gets created. It's so important that we often talk about uh, conversational AI as a subset of generative AI. And I, and I like to define it as artificial agents that can engage in flowing, coherent dialogue with human users while keeping track of the conversational context and the informational goals. This is not like, you know, issuing a command to Siri. Uh, this is real conversations, which brings me to conversational agents, which will be the entities we interact with. Right now, we think of these as chat bots that we type and they type back. Uh, these will soon transition to voice bots where we just talk in uh, normal voice. And this will transition to virtual spokespeople where there's a face and persona that's uh, that's displayed. And as you're talking to this uh, virtual person, it's expressing uh, facial expressions and, and it looks like a real person you're talking to. Uh, that's the path we're on for sure. Because our future is conversational. Uh, we will speak naturally to our computers, not stiff commands, real conversations. And computers will speak naturally back to us, not stiff answers, but genuine back and forth with the AI asking for elaborations, clarifications, context. And in fact, the AI will get to know you over time. It's collecting data as it's interacting with you. This is a new form of media, conversational media, that's interactive and adaptive form of information delivery that's individually targeted at users at a massive scale. When will we speak to our computers? 
all the time. We will have conversations with our search engines, with our digital assistants, with our productivity software, uh, with websites, businesses, and services. We'll have a digital virtual spokesperson that you're interacting with, and uh, and you will have conversations with them. Um, throughout our, our digital lives, we will just talk to our computers. This will be powered by foundational models, large language models, from a handful of major corporations. And you might think, oh, well, if we just regulate those that small number of foundational models, or if they behave responsibly, we're good. We're not good because uh, it will also be accessed through APIs by countless third parties who uh, can influence the conversations through the API. And so you'll be interacting with a website, having a conversation, and you don't really know uh, what the third party is doing through the API. And so without regulation, you won't know who you're talking to, and you won't know what their agenda is. Which brings me to the AI manipulation problem, which relates really to, to targeted, customized, interactive, AI-generated content. So let's say we have a generative AI system and um, somebody, a third party, has an influence agenda and they want to persuade somebody. Uh, what they can do is generate targeted influence on that user that's custom generated. Custom generated piece of content specifically for that user based on information you have about that user, their likes and wants and values. Create a piece of targeted influence, custom generated. That alone is dangerous, and we're gonna be seeing that right away. Um, but it gets more dangerous because these generative AI systems can then sense the user's reaction to that influence in real time. How does that user respond to that piece of influence that was just presented to them? senses the reaction, and then it adapts its influence tactics in real time to increase the persuasive impact. Adapts its tactics, and so you have this cycle that goes round and round where it imparts influence, senses reactions, adapts tactics, imparts influence, and so what you will have is in real time targeted persuasion optimized by AI. Now, I know this sounds abstract, but honestly, we humans just call this a conversation. After all, if you're a human salesperson and you want to influence somebody, what are you going to do? Uh, you're not going to hand them a document. That's not a great way to influence somebody. The best way to influence somebody if you're a human salesperson is uh, you pitch them. You sense their reactions and reservations in real time. And then you adjust your tactics and you, you pitch them again. And you sense their reactions and you adjust their tactics and you adjust your pitch and you go round and round and round. And you can be very, very persuasive. Generative AI can now do this, and it will be doing this. It will customize a pitch for you, a verbal pitch, uh, but it will be crafted based on your history and your likes and your wants and your background. It will customize a pitch for you. It will adapt to your reactions. At first, your reactions might just be, how did you, you know, what did you type back? Uh, but soon your reaction will be what you say back, including your vocal inflections. It will sense your emotions and your vocal inflections. Um, and eventually when you're looking at um, a real video chat with an AI, it will be looking at your facial expressions as well. And, and so it will adapt to your reactions. And it will then uh, adjust its arguments. It will make very convincing arguments because it has access to the full uh, world of information. And it will also learn what works on you over time, not just the tactics that work on you, but the style. So these conversational AI systems will be more skilled than any human salesperson. So why is generative AI dangerous? Well, it will enable targeted, customized, interactive, and adaptive influence at scale. There will be personalized advertisements that are just custom images and videos that are designed specifically for, to, to be persuasive to you. And that's dangerous and already Google, Microsoft, Meta have already announced that they're going to be using generative AI to create custom advertisements, potentially images and videos that target people uh, based on their very personal specific parameters. But that's just the very first step. The, the real issue is that you will be able to then do this interactively and adapt in real time. And so conversational media is the easiest way to do that, where conversational uh, media will be able to basically talk you into influence objectives. And it won't just be advertisements. It will be personalized propaganda, misinformation, disinformation, 
that can talk you into different beliefs. If, if, uh, if a third party wants to talk you into believing that vaccines are bad, um, it can make very, very convincing arguments. Read your reactions, adjust to your reservations, adjust. That is a much more dangerous piece of uh, uh, influence tactic than uh, just handing you a piece of content. And so we're talking about AI optimized persuasion, and it's extremely dangerous. It will optimize what it says to you. It will hone in on the most effective arguments for you. It will optimize how it says it to you. It will adjust its style, tone, tactics to best influence you. It will optimize who says it. Even the voice and persona, especially when it's, when it's visual, the age, gender, race, look, will be optimized for you. Over time, it will learn what uh, types of uh, personas are most influential on you. And so generative AI could be the most powerful technology of persuasion that we've faced. And this is asymmetric influence. And this is a really important point because you could say, well, oh, well, human salespeople already can do this. So what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that uh, we humans are at extreme disadvantage when we're talking to a conversational AI. Um, there's, first of all, there's a familiarity asymmetry. The AI will know your interests, your values, your education, your income, your political affiliation, your favorite teams, favorite movies. You will know nothing about the AI that you're talking to, uh, much less than you would know just by reading a human salesperson. There's reaction asymmetry. The AI will be able to read you from your real-time reactions, your words, but ultimately your vocal inflections, facial expressions, posture. You will read nothing into the entity you're talking to. Black box. There's continuity asymmetry. The AI will model you over time. It will learn how you act and react over time. You will learn nothing about this entity you're talking to because it will have an, a, a new agenda every time. There's an information asymmetry. This AI will have access to infinite information to make persuasive points to you. You will be overpowered. You can't judge if this AI is cherry picking obscure facts or not because it has access to the, to the whole world of information and you're just a human. There's a strategic asymmetry. The AI could be trained on human psychology, cognitive biases, negotiation tactics, sales tactics. You're outsmarted. <laughs> You're outmatched. No human salesperson could have these skills. And then there's intentional asymmetry. When you're engaged with a, with a human salesperson, you generally know what their intentions are to sell you a product or service. You won't know the agenda of your search engine. Uh, you could you know, stumble on a certain website, uh, engage with it, have a conversational interaction, and you know, might not realize that its real goal is not to give you uh, the sports information that you want, but to, to deliver subtle messaging through conversation. And so what do we do about it? Well, we need to educate policymakers and regulators. Uh, first, they need to understand generative AI enables new forms of targeted influence. It's not just traditional influence generated at scale. Uh, they need to understand that generative AI, the influence agenda could be subtle messaging. The user might not even notice the targeted persuasion was woven into a conversation. They need to understand that generative AI can learn what works on you personally. They will model your persuasiveness. And should that even be allowed? Should they be allowed to model your persuasiveness to know what kind of tactics uh, work best on you? So my recommendation is that all forms of targeted generative influence should be highly regulated, but especially if it's interactive and adaptive, uh, for example, conversational influence should be very highly regulated uh, and it's, it's very easy to deploy in dangerous ways. So uh, again, I'm Lewis Rosenberg. Um, feel free to contact me at lewis at unanimous.ai. And if you want more information about this particular topic, uh, I've written a recent paper called uh, The Manipulation Problem, Generative AI and the Threat to Epistemic Agency uh, that you can also find online. Thanks.